all those crossfitters are doing on TSN and it looks crazy. I can't do any of that stuff. So we've always got people coming in that are talking about what they saw on TSN, the, the top level CrossFit athletes on TSN or Facebook, um, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. And they're like, I'm not there. I can't do that stuff. And that is totally understandable. We do not expect anyone coming in the door that has never experienced any of this stuff to be able to jump in and, and basically pick up where a top level CrossFit athlete is. Their training is gonna be completely different than what you're gonna get in a typical gym setting. If someone's just starting out, we do not expect any of that from you in that type of, uh, in this type of environment. Um, everyone's different, uh, everyone's goals are different. We have athletes here that are in their 70s that are doing CrossFit and it doesn't look like the athletes on TSN. Uh, it would basically be comparable if I gave you a pair of skates and a hockey stick and said, you're gonna jump in tonight with the Winnipeg Jets playing the Chicago Blackhawks. Good luck. You probably wouldn't do so well. You'd probably get crushed. You'd probably get hurt. It's the exact same thing. Those athletes that you see on TV, that's the pinnacle of the sport of CrossFit. Those athletes put in multiple hours a day of training. They've been doing it for years, most of them. And as time goes on, they have to put in more and more time, work, effort, recovery to be able to maintain that level or even progress to where they need to be to compete in the CrossFit Games. So when someone comes in and says, I can't do exactly what they're doing, I don't even know if I should be doing this, that is the very top level. That's like saying to a kid, you know, you're probably not gonna make the NHL, so don't even try. It's not something you wanna do. You wanna come in, have fun with your training, learn new stuff. Um, have coaches and, and other athletes and members that are going to be supportive of you and want the best for you. That's exactly what we want for anyone that walks in the door here, whether you're just getting off the couch, wanting to get a bit fitter, a bit healthier, try something new, or if you're already a competitive athlete, or maybe you did some competitive high level sport in university and now you're not doing that anymore and you just want something you know new and different to challenge you and uh, something that you know, you're not gonna get good at overnight because it does take a while to get good at this stuff. Do I need to use barbells in class? Well, that depends. If you want to get really good at powerlifting, the bench, the deadlift, and the squat, yes, you need exposure to the barbell. You got to be under that barbell. If you're going to be doing Olympic weightlifting, the snatch and the clean and jerk, you're going to need to use the barbell. If you want to get really good at CrossFit, you're going to need to use the barbell. For those that don't care about powerlifting or any of the Olympic lifts in CrossFit or the Olympic lifts in and of themselves, you do not need to use barbells. We do have different options here at Stark where we'll have classes that if it does have something a bit more technical and it's uh, a barbell is involved, we do have different options that might use kettlebells or dumbbells with a fairly similar movement. Um, with the kettlebells, you're able to keep your wrist neutral. So not everyone has the required mobility to get a bar in the front rack position where their elbows are high and their wrists are back um, or the overhead squat position or snatch position where your wrists are cocked back and overhead. Not everyone can do that. Um, there are different factors in play too that might limit one's ability to do an overhead squat perfectly. So we can use kettlebells where your wrist will be more neutral, whether you're in the front rack position holding the kettlebell here, or if you're in an overhead position. So there's definitely ways to kind of get around using the barbell and still get a hell of a good workout um, and some strength training with kettlebells and dumbbells. And you can still bring that heart rate up too with those movements and depending on you know, loading, you can still get really strong with them, uh, depending on, once again, loading. If you wanna go a little bit lighter, do the movements faster and make sure they're still mechanically sound, you can get your heart rate up and still get a very good cardiovascular workout um, combined with some strength training. So some HIIT training or using them for boot camps or uh, CrossFit classes. There's a wide variety of things that we can do that doesn't need a barbell in your hands and you can still get some great benefit from it. When can I start adding weight? So, two answers for this. First answer for me is going to be when an athlete can move a barbell really well or a dumbbell or a kettlebell, if they're mechanically sound with that movement, then we can start adding weight to it. If someone is having an issue moving a bar or a dumbbell or a kettlebell properly and they don't have the mechanics down, we definitely don't want them adding weight to that movement. So there is a little bit of time and progression that takes place. 
Usually it's a little bit of trial and error and with our skilled coaches, they'll know exactly how much you can add and still keep the athlete moving as well as possible. If the athlete gets to a point where they're not moving that well, we've either got to get their technique dialed in, maybe get them focusing on it a little bit more, or we take a little bit of weight off. Either way, we want the movements to look good, we want the athlete to look good, and we want them to walk away from a training session feeling like it was successful. How long will it take for me to get good at CrossFit? Well, that depends. I know it's an easy answer to give, but there's a lot of factors at play. So it depends on, one, how often you're coming to classes. If you're someone who's coming once a week or twice a week, you're gonna have limited exposure to the movements that we're doing in classes. So it might take a little bit longer to learn some of those movements, especially when they get more technical, like some of the Olympic lifts. That can take years to get good at. Some people pick it up a little bit quicker. I tend to find if we have dancers or gymnasts or martial artists that have very good body awareness, they can translate that movement uh, or what we're asking of them to the barbell or a dumbbell very easily. Um, it's not to say that they don't need to practice the movements, but they usually pick things up a little bit quicker. If you are coming multiple days a week, sometimes four, five, six days a week, you have exposure to more movements, chances are you're gonna pick them up a little bit more. If you're someone who has mobility restrictions so they can't get into the perfect position, one thing that you would need to work on is to try to get a little bit more mobile so that you can hit optimal positions for those movements. The problem with not having the mobility and going and learning these movements is that you're gonna be stuck in a certain movement pattern until you can regain that mobility that maybe you had lost from years of doing you know, nothing or lack of movement. If you do have the required mobility right off the bat, it does make it a lot easier to hit the appropriate positions right off the bat and it doesn't take as long. You don't have to retrain anything if you end up getting you know, habits that restrict you in certain ranges of motion like I was mentioning before. So if you can move freely and you don't have any mobility restrictions and you are coming you know, four or five, six days a week, you're gonna get better at CrossFit quicker. If it comes to the strength building portion, say you're someone who's very mobile, but you don't have the required strength for say a strict push-up or handstand push-up or strict pull-up. Building strength takes time. Um, if you don't have a body weight pull-up or if you don't have the perfect push-up, building that strength required to hit those movements is going to be extremely important. So that does take longer as well. So just to kind of sum it up, Mobility restrictions, if you have those, you wanna to try to eliminate those so that you can move as good as possible. Weakness, as in say body weight movements, pull-ups, push-ups, um, even squats. If you can only squat your own body weight and you can't add weight to that, it's gonna take a while to get strong and build yourself a good foundation so that the movements that we are hitting in say the CrossFit workouts that are a little bit more technical, a little bit more demanding, you're gonna be able to do those. Uh, and then at learning all the technique as well. There's always different ways that you can make things more efficient, um, used to your mechanical advantage, and it, it does take time to learn. So how long can it take to get good at CrossFit? Years. I want to do kipping pull-ups. When can I start? So at start here, we do have some limitations, recommendations for people doing kipping pull-ups. I want to see every athlete that does want to start kipping pull-ups they should have a prerequisite strength of about three to five strict pull-ups. Um, we do have some different options for, uh, for the muscle-ups as well. So they've got to have three to five strict ring dips, and then we can start working on some of that stuff. Also, if someone does not have the required shoulder mobility, I'm not gonna allow them to do kipping pull-ups. Say, chin-ups might be a better option for them, but if I get one person to put their arms up and one arm goes straight up and the other's like this, as soon as we start kipping and swinging on the bar, that's gonna twist and turn those shoulders and that spine, not something that we want for that athlete. If they don't have any issues with mobility, their shoulders, their T-spine, anything like that, um, any range of motion problems in that way or injuries that, uh, you know, that might come of it, and they have the required strength, then we can start getting them working on uh, kipping progressions. So that would start off with a beat swing, which sometimes we do in warm-ups. All athletes could take part in that. And that's just kind of getting that moving back and forth uh, so that they are getting a feel for holding a hollow body position and then maintaining tension throughout that midline as well. 
Once they can do that, we might start them off on top of the bar and then pushing away, finding their swing, finding that hollow body position, uh, and being able to maintain tension. Then we might try to get them going back up. So there's a lot of different progressions for it, but first of all, athletes need to have the required strength so that their joints are gonna be supported by their muscles and connective tissues. If your joints aren't ready for that and you don't have the strength to do a strict pull up and then you start swinging on it, you're probably gonna end up with injuries. So it is a slower process to get stronger and get those movements down, but it's gonna be worthwhile in the long run.